Welcome back to Old School Sports, and we are only a couple weeks away from the release of Out of the Park Baseball 23. So, as fans of the game series are thinking about what they're going to be doing in OOTP 23, most are probably thinking about how to fix the rosters of their teams, what the minor league systems will look like, who they're going to trade for, who the top free agents are. But one area that a lot of people don't think about is the coaching staff, and that can have a significant impact on your team. So we're going to take a look at the Pittsburgh Pirates in OOTP 22 and try to decide, is this a coaching staff that is any good? And if not, what should we do to fix it? So the first thing that we're going to do is go to our front office, and before we even look at the personnel, check out the staff roles. What does staff cohesion look like? And you can see at this point, we're in the green, we're content. So we're okay in terms of our staff cohesion. So there's no immediate red flag looking at that. But when we dig a little deeper, we see that if things start going bad for this Pirates team, your staff could become very problematic. Looking at who works well with others, only a few aspects of that are positive for this team. And then when you're looking at the relationships among your staff and who struggles, you can see that we've got five people that our bench coach Don Kelly potentially has problems with, four people that our third base coach has problems with, and then five people each that our scouting director and team trainer potentially can have problems with. Now the relationships of the scouting director and team trainer are probably less important than those who are going to be on the field every day, but with so many potential negatives here, if things start going bad for the pirate season, this cohesion could get materially worse, which will have a negative impact on your entire franchise going forward. So I'd say at this point, the cohesion right now is not a red flag, but the number of potential personality issues we have among our coaching staff is a potential issue. So now let's look at the actual talent that we have on staff. We'll start with our team trainer, Rafael Fritas. And he's not that good. He's outstanding at fatigue recovery and is outstanding at rehabbing back injuries. But he's poor at preventing back injuries, poor at preventing other injuries, only fair at preventing arm injuries, unproven at preventing leg injuries. He's not a very good trainer and someone that we would like to think about upgrading from. Our scouting director, Joe Delicari, he's average at everything and his scouting preference is neutral. Many people in the game want to have a scout that is very focused on tools. So average at best might be good enough for the Pirates in real life, but probably not going to be good enough for you if you want to play as the Pirates. Looking at our third base coach, Joey Cora, most important things for a third base coach are going to be in-game running, and how good he or she is at teaching, catching, infield defense, outfield defense, and running. So there's some potential here. Joey Cora, he's decent at in-game running. Obviously, you'd prefer better than that. But he is outstanding in, catching three as in teaching three aspects of the game. So Cora is definitely someone who you would think about keeping around. But then we turn to our first base coach, Tariq Brock. And although he's excellent at catching infield and outfield defense, not all that great at running. And most importantly, he's poor at in-game running. So you have a coach who's your base coach that's going to be making the most decisions for you is actually poor at those in-game running decisions. So he's someone you could definitely think about moving on from. Hitting coach Rick Eckstein, good at teaching hitting, which is positive but only fair with development, and he's poor with both mechanics and aging. So we can probably upgrade there. Pitching coach, Oscar Marin, is a disaster. He's only decent at teaching pitching, 
fair at development, and both poor at mechanics and handling aging. Bench coach Don Kelly, he's fine. Decent with development, good with mechanics, excellent with handling aging. He's got average relationships. But as we talked about, he's also someone who personality-wise is the center of some of the problems on this team. And then our manager, Derek Shelton. Again, he's fine. His reputation is average. Average with development. Average with mechanics. Average with aging. Relationships are good. That's positive. But he's got some disasters on his staff. So we already know that if things start going bad because of the team cohesion potential issues, that this could get real ugly real fast. And then when we look at these personnel, I'd say about a third of them are just bad. About a third of them are mediocre, below average-ish, and a third of them are decent major league coaches. One of the theories of a coaching staff is that you can turn it over time. You don't want to spend the money to get rid of people, buy them out of the years of their contracts. The issue is that everyone on this staff, except for Shelton, is signed through 2023. Shelton is signed through 2024. Do you really want to operate the first three years of your franchise with a below average coaching staff that's going to have an influence on your on-field product and most importantly it's going to have an influence on the prospects that you bring up and their development at the major league level after they've gone through your minor league system so i think in this situation when we have a mediocre to bad coaching staff and we have potential for this staff to start turning on each other when things go bad which they very well may by playing the pittsburgh pirates so rather than just fixing a player here or there, or rather than letting them play it out through 2023, I think we have a bad enough situation that if you're at the start of the sim, you need to start blowing up this coaching staff. So Friedis, the team trainer, very mediocre. As a famous American once said, you're fired. Joey Delcari, very average, doesn't have the type of scouting preference that you want. You're fired. And I promise I'll stop doing my horrible Trump impression next. Joey Cora, we'll think about keeping him. Um, he's great at actually coaching up players and decent at in-game running. Maybe want to do better than that, but as we talk through this, he is someone who we may be able to keep. Tariq Brock is not as good at Joey Cora. He's excellent where Cora is outstanding at teaching those three traits. He's poor at in-game running. We're going to send him away also. Rick Eckstein, the, pit, the hitting coach, good at hitting, not that good with development and horrible with mechanics and aging. Rick Eckstein fired also. Oscar Marin, pitching coach, even worse, fired also. Don Kelly, the bench coach, he has potential for someone that we would keep. You know, we don't want to just completely waste money, even though he's only making 100000 a year for the next three years. So in uh, the case of a Major League Baseball franchise, you know, spending $300,000 to get rid of somebody that's no good is um, not that big a deal. He's not no good. He's decent, like it says with most of his traits. So we would think about keeping him. And now the big question is Derek Shelton. As we talked about, his manager profile is actually decent. But the reason we have to let go of Shelton is that keep in mind, we want better coaches on the team. And we also want better staff cohesion and less people who struggle with one another personality wise and Derek Shelton right now has the authority to hire the hitting coach hire the bench coach and hire both of the base coaches so even with the moves that we've made there are four spots on this staff four critical spots on this staff that Derek Shelton is to, still going to be in charge of doing the hiring for 
So while he probably will bring on people who are marginally better on average than the very mediocre staff that we just fired, there's no guarantee that he will do that. And there's also no guarantee that he's going to play pay any attention to potential team cohesion while he's making those decisions. So we actually have to fire Derek Shelton also. And that's obviously going to be the most expensive part of this, almost $3.2 million um, that we're going to have to pay out. Fortunately, um, we're right at the start of the sim. And despite all of the moves that we just made, we still have got money. So we're going to spend less money on, we're going to have less money available for free agents than we would have otherwise. But I think in a situation like this, you have to just bite the bullet right at the beginning of the sim and then proceed going forward um, with a good coaching staff, and we're hoping a great coaching staff that's going to help the development of your franchise for the next three years a lot more than the people that we got rid of would have. And also, since we're playing as general manager, we're going to fire our assistant GM, Ben Charrington. Really no need to keep him along, and he was someone who had some relation, bad relationships also. So we have a clean slate with the exception of potentially Don Kelly and Joey Cora. And now, rather than thinking about bringing on people who are going to work well with Don Kelly's controlling personality and Joey Cora's personable personality... Our goal is to fill the most important roles on this team first. And if we think that Don Kelly and Joey Cora can get along with the people that we really want to bring on and potentially contribute to the team, then we keep them. But as soon as there's problems with the personalities that they have, we're going to have to let them go and replace them with somebody else who's hopefully a better coach and is also going to get along better with the people that we're bringing on to this team. So clearly the most important thing for us to find is a manager, and that should be our first focus. Finding a manager who um, is really good at everything, but we want someone who's good at development, good at mechanics, good at handling aging, and also hopefully when we get into them closely as someone who's going to have good relationships with the team. So when you go to the search thing, you see Bruce Bochy, Buck Showalter, John Farrell, Terry Collins, John Gibbons, Ozzie Guillen, Art Howe, lots of famous, well-known managers, some of whom have won championships. The issue with hiring any of these people, though, is what we just ran into with the deposed Derek Shelton. Bruce Bochy would be an excellent manager to bring on, legendary with development, legendary with mechanics, outstanding with aging. The problem is, he's a Hall of Fame manager, most likely, and he wants authority to hire the hitting coach, the pitching coach, the bench coach, and both, both of the base coaches. So we're not going to be able to set up the team the exact way that we want to if we bring on somebody like Bochy. Buck Showalter, similar situation. He wants to hire the hitting, pitching, and bench coaches. John Farrell. He wants to hire the hitting coaches and the bench coaches. And as the general manager, we can't allow that type of discretion because the manager himself or the AI is not going to make as good decisions as we can make. So we're going to have to look for a manager that is not quite as outstanding as some of these legends of the game, but it's a manager who is going to let us as the general manager have discretion over all the rest of the hiring so we can build the best coaching staff in baseball to give these Pirates the best opportunity to reach their true potential and win as many games as possible in the coming seasons. So as we continue to search, we see John, John Gibbons here. He's not as good as Bochy, Showalter, Farrell, etc. at development, but he's still excellent. Good with mechanics. Good at handling aging. We think he's going to have good relationships with the Pirates team, which is positive. And lo and behold, he's going to let us hire the rest of the staff. So we can use our brain rather than OOTP's AI to make good decisions and build a pitching staff. 
He's personable. He works well with personable people. And he struggles with easygoing people. So in a separate piece of paper or an Excel spreadsheet or whatever you want to do, we're going to have three columns. What is the personality of this manager or this coach, potential coach? Who does he work well with and who does he struggle with? But we're going to hire John Gibbons as our manager. So we're going to offer him a contract. He's looking for $1.2 million. We are the Pirates. We're going to see if we can sign him for $1.1 million over five years. We'll make that offer to John Gibbons, and he'll let us know. But now we know we have a personable manager on board who works well with other personable people, and he struggles with easygoing people. So now, turning back to the two guys that we kept around... We don't have any major problems yet. Don Kelly's controlling. He works well with normal. And wait, oh, we do have a problem. The new manager is personable, and Don Kelly struggles with personable people. And uh-oh, we've got another problem here with third base coach Joey Cora. He also struggles with personable people. So the guy that we're building our entire coaching staff around John Gibbons, these two holdovers who are average in the case of Don Kelly. I'd say Joey Cora is an above average coach just because he is so good at catching infield and outfield defense, but he's still only decent at in-game running. And I think we're going to be able to find somebody just as good who is less of a potential personality mess. So unfortunately, with the manager choice we've made, Don Kelly... You're gone. And Joey Cora, you're gone also. But now we've got a clean slate, and we know we've got a personable manager who works well with personable people and struggles with easygoing people. Another key decision is going to be who our scouting director is. So we'll look to see who we can hire for that job. So we're going to look at our scout ratings, people who prefer to be scouting director, and to us, the most important thing is how they do with Scouting International and what their amateur preference is. We want people who are, in all probability, highly favor tools and also have a really good overall scouting profile. You know, if this, this guy right here, R.J. Harrison, could be the answer. He's good at scouting the majors, excellent at the minors, excellent at international, excellent at amateurs, and he highly favors tools. But now we need to look at R.J. Harrison's personality. So we go back to the default screen, and that will show us what their personality is, who they work well with, and who they don't work well with. And if we scroll down to our friend R.J. Harrison, our potential friend R.J. Harrison, we haven't hired him yet, we see that he is personable. He works well with easygoing people, and he struggles with controlling people. Well, the only other personable, the only other person on our staff is personable. So R.J. Harrison is not going to cause any problems for us, and we'll say that our scouting director is the second most important hire we have to make. So we're going to try to hire R.J. Harrison as our scouting director. He's looking for a little over a million a year. We'll see if we can sign him to 850000 a year for five years. So we've got offers now out to our manager and our scouting director, two of the most important decisions for the team. Next thing we're going to look at is we're going to turn to the two main coaches, our hitting coach and our pitching coach. Some would say to go bench coach next. Some would say to go team trainer next. Um, Perfectly reasonable to do any of those, but um, we'll go to pitching coach next. Go back to our coach default ratings, people whose preferred occupation is pitching coach. And the number one thing we're going to be looking for here is teaching pitching. And then we also want someone who's good at development, good at mechanics, and good at handling aging, if at all possible. So there's two that stand out, uh, Bryce Bentz and Dave Rigetti. Looking at Bryce Bentz. Easygoing personality, works well with personable, 
he struggles with easygoing people. So right now, he looks like a potential choice. His relationships with the team are only average. And then we take a look at Dave Rigetti. He's personable. We know that that'll work well, and it'll work really well with the manager, John Gibbons, because he's good with personable people. He works well with controlling, and he struggles with normal. That Neither of those are an issue. We don't have any controlling or normal people right now. And Rigetti's relationships are good. So although Bryce Bentz is a bit better, legendary versus outstanding, they're both good development, and Bryce Bentz is a notch better in mechanics and aging, I like Rigetti's good relationships with the team. And I'm also a Yankees fan. So I'm going to bring Rags on as our pitching coach, or at least attempt to bring him on. And again, on my little spreadsheet or my little sheet next to me, writing down, Rigetti's personable, he works well with controlling people, and he struggles with normal people. And right now that causes no problems in anything with our staff. So we are going to offer a Mr. Rigetti $425,000 a year to be our pitching coach for the next half decade. Moving on to the hitting coaches, similar situation. We want someone who's great at teaching hitting, development, mechanics, handling aging. We want someone who's as good as possible in those areas. Joey DeMonte at the top of the list, who is personable, works well with normal, struggles with easygoing. We don't have any easygoing people on the team. We know that our manager works incredibly well with personable people, and Joey DeMonte looks like a great opportunity. So we're going to make an offer to DeMonte as well. Moving on to our bench coach, um, want a jack of all trades in this position, uh, the bench coach. Want someone who's good at development, aging, mechanics can't hurt. And then you also want someone who's a good teacher of catching infield, outfield, and or running because uh, they're going to potentially be coaching people on all of those areas. Matthew Johnson certainly stands out. Controlling personality, which is different, but looking at our team, Dave Rigetti works well with or our potential team, assuming we hire all of these people. Dave Rigetti works well with controlling people, so that's plus one. Our scout, Harrison, actually struggles a bit with controlling people. But all in all, adding Johnson is neutral as far as personalities. He struggles with normal people, but we don't have any normals on our staff. So he's going to be a plus with Rigetti and a minus with Harrison, but he is an incredible coach. He's excellent at coaching three of the four things he could be coaching, and he's good at teaching running. And then he's excellent with development, outstanding with mechanics and aging. He's got average relationships, but this is a really good coach. So this is one situation. We know we've got a bunch of pluses associated with Gibbons and the personable people. So we're going to be willing to bring Matthew Johnson on board, even though he is going to struggle a little bit with our scout. He's just too good a coach to let go by. On to our team trainer. Um, everything's important. You know, I personally think preventing arm injuries is probably the most important thing you can do. And Rick Jamison, an OOTP 22 legend, is legendary at preventing arm injuries. But what does his personality look like? Oh, sorry, i got to go on another screen for that. But you can see he's excellent or legendary, outstanding at just about everything, good in a few things, possibly the best trainer in the game. When we look at the default ratings for Jameson, he's personable. That's great. Our manager works well with personable people. He works well with temperamental people. We don't have any of those yet, so that's not positive, not negative. And he struggles with normal people, and we don't have any normal people on our proposed staff. So it's a plus to have him around because the manager, Gibbons, is going to get along well with him, and he doesn't cause any problems. And he's also the best in the business is what he do at what he does. So Jameson is an easy ad for us to offer him a contract as well. So down to just two roles to fill now, first base coach and a third base coach. Um, 
main thing about them is how good they are at coaching in-game running and then can they help us at catcher, infield, outfield, or running uh, coaching to help our players get better in those fronts. If we find someone who's got those aspects and who's going to be a positive influence in terms of personality relationships with the other coaches, then we found ourselves a great potential add. So looking at all the candidates, uh, a few of them certainly stand out. And one here, Ozzie Guillen, former World Series and winning manager for the White Sox. Odds are he would not take a first base coach job uh, for the Pirates in real life. But he's outstanding at in-game running, excellent at teaching running, and then he's outstanding at teaching catching the infield and the outfield. He's got a temperamental personality. But looking at our team, that's not a problem. Because our potential bench coach, Johnson, and our trainer, Jameson, both work well with temperamental personalities. And we don't have anyone who struggles with temperamental personalities on the team. And we don't have any normal personalities on the team. So yeah, it's a little surprising that Ozzie Guillen would actually accept a first base coaching position. And Ozzie Guillen uh, has been at times a bit dramatic in terms of his personality and some of the things that he has said and done in the course of his career. But for OOTP purposes, where the main personality traits that we care about are all here on the screen in front of us, he's actually going to fit in incredibly well with this team. So we're going to see if we can potentially offer Ozzy Guillen. See, he wants the manager job. But he says he would sign a contract as our first base coach. A lot less money. So we are going to try to bring on Ozzy. And we're not even going to mess around with the money and try to save a little money. Uh, because he would be such a great addition to the staff with the skills that he brings. So now we've got one last spot to fill on our staff, our third base coach. And we've got a bunch of personable people on our team. We've now got a temperamental person on our team. And we also have a controlling person on our pitching staff. So it's getting more and more complicated with um, the addition of the temperamental personality of Ozzie Guillen to find out someone, find someone who's good at in-game running, good at teaching, catching, infield, outfield, and running. So we've went through a bunch of these people, not great fits from a personality perspective. But if we scroll down a little bit, and this is just going to require brute force and time in terms of searching to find the kind of people that you want. We tracked down Tommy Runnels, who's excellent at in-game running, and he's good at everything else we'd want a third base coach to do, catching defense, infield defense, outfield defense, and running. So he's certainly acceptable. He's going to have average relationships, which is fine. But now personality, the big question. Temperamental. All right, we just hired Ozzy Guillen, who's also temperamental. So we know that we can hire a temperamental person. And he works well with temperamental people. So that will help. Um, Guillen will like having him around. And our bench coach, Johnson, and our trainer, Jameson, will also like having him around. And he only struggles with normal people. And we don't have any normal people on this pitching or this uh, coaching staff we're trying to put together. So Tom Runnels is potentially a really good addition if we can bring on this guy who wants to be a manager, although he hasn't managed in three decades at this point. Uh, but if we can bring on Tommy Runnels, we will potentially have our coaching staff complete. And he would consider joining our coaching staff as our third base coach. So we are going to offer him four hundred twenty-five grand a year for five years. We offered everyone five-year contracts. And if we go back to our front office and our personnel tab, you can see every role is now pending an offer. And with what we've done, we are going to have some great coaches if we can hire all of these people. And we are also going to have potentially great uh, cohesion and a staff that works incredibly well together. So we are going to sim ahead a few days. We're not going to do anything else. We're not going to try to change the Pirates roster. We're not going to try to make them any better than just the default. Uh, the main thing is to see if we can bring on everyone on the coaching staff that we want to. 
So we've now simmed ahead a few days and we have built our coaching staff. And just to look at finances, obviously we took a bit of a hit earlier when we fired all those people and now we've had to pay out contracts for this year. So it's cost us money to do this, but it hasn't required us to do anything exceptional. We had plenty of money in the budget to do this, to pay out all those old contracts and get people signed. And when we look at our staff now, we've got, it's hard to imagine that this isn't the best staff in the entire OOTP universe at this point. And we've got them all signed for the next five years to get this new game off to a fantastic start for us in terms of the influence that they're going to have on our players on and off the field. But then we look at the staff roles and, oh my God, it's unhappy. What's going on here? What did you do, OOTP? What did you do, old school sports? We had a better situation before. Patience, my friend. Patience. You look at this staff and they've just been thrown together over the last three games of the re the first three games of this regular season. We didn't even have a manager for some of them. They don't know each other. That will improve over time. And look at this. Gibbons works well with Rigetti and DeMonte. Matthew Johnson works well with Guillen and Runnels. Rigetti works well with Johnson. Guillen works well with Runnels. Runnels works well with Guillen. Jameson works well with both Guillen and Runnels. And there's only one potential problem on the entire staff. And it's that our scouting director is going to struggle a little bit with our bench coach. Our scouting director is going to be spending most of his time far, far away from Pittsburgh, looking at international prospects and amateur prospects. The relationship issues with your scouting director are probably the least important of anything possible. But have I ruined staff cohesion? And the answer is no. I've built the best coaching staff in the game. We've got them on board for the next five years together to guide our pirates to unimaginable heights. And we haven't even blown the budget of our pen, penny pinching Bob Nutting. So we are in really good shape. And because these relationships are so good. You are going to see that once this group works together for a little while, our staff cohesion is going to increase very dramatically. The last thing we need to do is just assign coaches, the great coaching staff we have to these roles. And you can see we got outstanding coaching of infield, outstanding coaching of catching with Guillen, Excellent coaching of outfield and good at teaching running. Um, we could upgrade that a bit to excellent with Guillen, but he uh, doesn't. Uh, yeah, this is this is as good as we can get because basically you can only have two two aspects per a coach. So um, we'll focus on our catcher and our infielders to be as good as possible and still have very good coaching for our outfield and running. But we're going to sim ahead just a couple months. We're not going to play anything, but we're just going to show you that even these near-term staff cohesion pain issues that we're dealing with now with this unhappy coaching staff are going to rapidly fix themselves because we have built such a cohesive team that once they get to know each other, is going to turn into one of the great coaching staffs in the history of OOTP. All right, well, we've simmed one month into the season, and the Pirates have actually had an incredible start for the Pirates, uh, 15 and 11. Uh, certainly don't expect them to keep that up, and, and that's not the point of this exercise. But when we look at our front office and our staff roles, whoa, they've only been together a month. And they're happy. We're almost off the charts in terms of our staff cohesion. Let's see what happens after another month of these incredible coaches who have personalities built to maximize performance. Let's see what they look like in another month. So we've simmed ahead another month now to the end of the end of May. And the Pirates are still playing well above expectations. Only 500 for the month of May, but still, you know, better than we would have expected. 
But again, that's not the point of this exercise. The fact that they're playing good on the field helps. But if we were 20 and 32 right now, instead of 28 and 24, the general themes that I'm talking about would still be happening. When we look at our staff roles just two months into the season, staff cohesion is ecstatic. We've built the best coaching staff in the entire league. And the other thing now, if you've been paying attention to player relationships, we now have five of our coaches have good relationships with players, which is more than it was when this season started. Building a cohesive team of your leaders who are excellent at doing the things that you need them to do and all get along with one another is going to pay huge dividends for your team as you try to play in OOTP 22 or as you try to play in a couple weeks in OOTP 23. If you've got other thoughts on the subject, would love to hear them down below. But my main point is that when you take over a new franchise, don't just think about the players. Take an objective look at your coaching staff. And if the cohesion is an issue, if the personalities are an issue, or if some of the coaches just aren't very good at what they do, don't be afraid to blow things up right away. You're going to be dealing with this coaching staff for multiple years. You may as well just straighten it out right at the beginning of the sim, get it right, and set yourself up for as much success as possible in your season. If you're enjoying the show, would appreciate if you would uh, like the video and subscribe and would love to hear your comments down below. Thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.